Hey, watch this clip. This is this is not from American C-SPAN. Uh, it's from Canada. It's from their parliament. It happened earlier today. Yes, pour 156, 156. Nays contre 145, 145. Je la motion adoptée. Order. Order. What's with the cheering and the paper throwing amid the wigs and the French? Uh, it's because they just toppled their government. This being Canada, it still was pretty civilized, spelling it with an S, not a Z. Uh, but yes, the government was toppled with a T. Uh, the Prime Minister in Canada is from the Conservative Party. This vote in Parliament today does not necessarily mean he's out of a job. It means there's going to be an election. It will be Canada's fourth election in seven years. What all the cheering was about, what they nailed him for, what they got this no-confidence vote for, was a lack of transparency on budget issues. And they are trying to slash one of the sources of the government's income, the government's revenue. They are proposing a cut in corporate taxes that could cost the Canadian government more than $6 billion. The vote that toppled the Canadian government today was about the Conservatives not coming clean about the financial impact of that spending and those corporate tax cuts. Imagine if you could topple a government for that year. Uh, but think about it. Just do the acting out part in your own head. Imagine what it would be like if we could topple governments for not coming clean about the budget impact of what they're doing here. Saying, for example, that you're going to cut corporate taxes always sounds great, sounds conservative, and it is about something fiscal, so it therefore sounds sort of fiscally conservative. But if you're dealing with a budget deficit, cutting revenue is bad for the deficit. It's not good for the deficit, it is bad for the deficit. It is not addition, it is subtraction. If we had full transparency about this, full understanding of all this, what's being done by all these Republican governors and Republican legislatures in the states right now would not be described in the Beltway media as fiscal conservatism. It would be described as profligacy, as fiscal madness, as something stupid enough that could, it could get even Canadians excited enough to stand up and shout and throw paper about it. This is what I mean. In Michigan, faced at the start of this year with a $2 billion budget deficit, Michigan Governor Rick Snyder proposed spending about $1.8 billion to give tax breaks to corporations. In New Jersey, faced at the start of the year with a $10.7 billion budget deficit, Republican Governor Chris Christie proposed spending $200 million on corporate tax breaks. In Florida, faced at the start of this year with a $4.7 billion deficit, Republican Governor Rick Scott proposed spending $1.5 billion over two years on corporate income tax cuts. In Ohio, faced the year, facing the year with $463 million worth of a budget deficit, the Republican-controlled House proposed spending up to $10 million on tax breaks specifically for the petroleum industry, because they need it. In Arizona, faced at the start of the year with a $3.1 billion deficit, Republican Governor Jan Brewer decided to spend over half a billion dollars over the next six years on tax cuts, about half of it on corporate tax cuts. In Wisconsin, faced at the start of the year with a $3.4 billion budget deficit, Republican Governor Scott Walker proceeded to spend $140 million Wisconsin dollars on business tax giveaways. This is sort of what toppled the Canadian government today. Conservatives up there trying to do the same thing, telling everybody they cared about the deficit. They wanted to be fiscally conservative while doing exactly the opposite, instituting huge revenue giveaways that would absolutely decimate the budget. The opposition cited their lack of transparency about the fiscal impact of what they were doing in voting them out today. We do not have a parliamentary system here, but we do have recalls here. And according to Wisconsin state Democrats, their effort to recall a handful of Republican state senators in Wisconsin is moving right along. Thank you very much. Democrats in Wisconsin telling The Washington Post today that statewide, they already have over half the petitions they need to recall the Republican senators they are targeting. They've got a 60-day window to collect signatures. And once they have been collected and validated, a special recall election would be held within six weeks. This does not wait till November. The Republican majority in the Wisconsin Senate is not a large one to begin with. If and when these recall elections happen, Democrats only need to flip back three of the Republican-held seats they are targeting. It is worth noting, one of those seats belongs to a Republican who is representing a district that voted for President Obama in 2008 by 61 percent. 
and one of them belongs to the guy whose wife says he is no longer living in his district because he now lives in Madison with his alleged 20-something girlfriend. Uh, so there might be some vulnerability among these Wisconsin Republicans. There might even be a Canadian-like government toppling in the making.